I usually aim my videos at dentists. However, this one is aimed at the public to give information so that the individual can make up his own mind about questions surrounding toxic root canals. Some credentials. I am a general dentist and I'm limiting my practice to exclusively treating root canals. I have done some implants in my career so far. The vast majority fortunately were successful. I've had two failures so far. As with any treatment, not everything is successful. The same goes for the root canals that I do. Uh, again, the vast majority of them fortunately are successful, but you do get sometimes uh, a failure here and there. I do apologize if I'm going to get quite technical during the course of this information, uh, informative video, because I don't have any other way of answering all the questions. If you go in and you google root canal toxicity, you get about just over 200,000 hits. If you, on the other hand, google root canal success stories, is uh, a little bit below 300,000. I don't want to use Google to compare, which is better. I would just like to illustrate the questions are out there, they are being asked. As far as I'm concerned, in my practice, I seldom get the question but when I do, it seems to come in waves. You get three, four patients in the space of a week that wants to know, you know, this is what we are about to do. Is it actually healthy to me? You get all the stories surrounding toxicity. I do believe the media has a lot to do with this specific pattern of questioning. It's their job to inform us about possible problems. I do also believe that there is a big drive from dentists themselves that uh, have branded root canals as toxic and they make compelling arguments for uh, the dentists that believe that root canals are a good treatment, they make compelling arguments against the toxicity. So it's all rather messy at this point and which is why I prefer to uh, give my point of view using a practical illustration, a case study that I've done in my practice about a year ago. The patient is a healthy individual, there's systemically nothing wrong with him. But if you look at the first x-ray that I took, even an untrained eye can spot the dark halo surrounding the root filled canals. Now I'm not going to deny that is massive. Look at the sheer size of it, it's bigger than the tooth. If you look more carefully, you will also see how the lesion intensifies so basically the body is trying to get rid of this tooth because it's obviously offending. Further, the treatment that was done on this tooth seemed to have been done very well. We observe a very nice and even seal starting in the crown of the tooth extending downwards to the absolute root tip. If we then look at a differently angled x-ray, we see that the practitioner even found a fourth canal. Some practitioners regard the fourth canal as very rare. But those of us that work under microscopes uh, would regard a fourth canal as actually quite common. But still, the, a lot of canals were found and looking at the x-ray, they weren't badly sealed, yet we do have a lesion that is quite big. Looking then at this case, all the arguments against doing a root canal treatment rings true. I mean, uh, it's very well filled seemingly on the x-ray. It is uh, full of toxicity, the body trying to reject something that's actually dead. And uh, who can deny that? Even myself, before I embarked on retreating this case, had my doubts. I actually advised the patients, the, you know, let's, let's try uh, rather extract the tooth. That is a guarantee. It will get rid of the problem. But uh, the patient asks, you know, shouldn't we just try? Uh, he doesn't want an implant. He thinks he's too young for an implant and uh, well that's what we did this is usually the view that greets us when we look at a tooth through an operating microscope i've got it if i recall about six or seven times magnification uh, if you look on the what this is the view of the rear root you can see the sort of double canal but what's also very very obvious is the sheer amount of rubbish inside this tooth it was reeking and it was heavily infected and I can't point out why because everything appeared to be fine on the x-ray and in the mouth. 
the still image illustrates it a bit better it's not a moving target and I've cropped it so that you can take a closer look there's no denying this is a toxic root canal we remove all the artificial material and fill the tooth up with calcium hydroxide paste the calcium hydroxide will lift up the pH on the inside of the tooth that kills all the bacteria and it also uh, helps to settle the bone favoring bone reformation cleaning the tooth thoroughly plays arguably the biggest role in the outcome of a treatment like this and I believe this is the step that's mostly neglected by dentists across the board uh, it's a time consuming process and in a world where time equals money it's unfortunate that the most critical part gets rushed uh, I spent I think in excess of 15 minutes rinsing this tooth out with 6% sodium hypochlorite that is household bleach at twice the concentration that it's supplied to, to the public this is normal, we use it routinely in root canal treatments we prefer this over anything else, it works very well but yes, it's extremely dangerous, it has, has to be handled with extreme caution this is my result, what I came up with my refilling technique is a heat based technique we physically melt the root canal filling material into place and compact it so that it can fill all the voids within the root spaces I want to draw your attention to a couple of things first of all obviously the four canals but the difference perhaps is they are more thoroughly filled than they were initially secondly there is a pin that I have placed to strengthen the temporary crown that we placed to monitor the tooth lastly the slight overfill of the sealant into the bone it does make the result look a lot more sloppy than it would otherwise have been but uh, the material I have to establish is a bioacceptable sealer there is also a lot of uh, talk about the toxicity of these sealers there is a huge amount of research going into making this modern sealers as atoxic as possible it also indicates a good seal this is taken yesterday the difference almost perfect healing within 12 months note how the bone fold out even between the root of the roots of the tooth where the bone density was at its lowest it's actually gone on to heal the best in this area also note if you compare the size of that overfill you'll notice it's also shrinking on the new photo and that is because of the bioresorbable nature of this sealant it is slowly but surely being broken away and taken out of the body through the kidneys now if all root canals were toxic how would this have healed up so nicely that's the question I'm asking you know the arguments is for toxicity uh, they say yeah, it's something dead and the body is going to reject something dead I beg to differ just look at how nicely it has reintegrated this tooth probably won't last as long as for instance an implant but I am confident with a proper crown it will give years even hopefully decades and you know research is going so quickly these days that years decades down the line we might have something a better type of implant we might even be able to cultivate a new tooth to transplant into this area so not only do you buy extra life for the tooth but you also buy extra research into newer better and nicer treatment modalities I think it is incorrect to simply brand each and every root canal as a toxic mess I do agree that there are a lot of them that are not up to standard but that's not a reflection on the treatment, that's a reflection on the initial effort that was done to try and save the tooth. If the root canal wasn't done properly, yes, it will become toxic. So it's up to the patient to look for somebody that will be able to sort him out with a proper type of treatment. As for dentists claiming that all root canals are toxic and they have to be replaced and get implants done, in our market in South Africa the profit margins on implants are larger than on the root canal so you know you can make your own conclusions from that I sometimes get the idea that the root canal treated tooth that has an infection on it is nothing but a convenient scrape coat to try and uh, motivate more expensive artificial uh, replacement of teeth 
But in the end, the decision will always lie with the patient. Uh, I hope I've been of a little help with the information to try and provide you with uh, better knowledge and uh, place you in a better position to m next time make a more informed decision. Uh, I do like saving teeth, but I'd be first to admit not all of them are savable and um, th it's, it's unfortunately a bit of a grey area but um, in the end uh, you know, good luck with, with what you decide to do and whatever the decision you decide uh, I hope out of the bottom of my heart that it works for you that's the most important